Uh, welcome, good afternoon. My name is Michele and I will uh, talk to you about Theo, this tool I wrote with some friends. And you can find it on GitHub. So let's start. So, okay, I'm a dad, first of all, full stack developer, and I'm an avid music listener. I live in Milan. I'm born in Milan, I still live in Milan. So, let's start with some words I will use during the speech. So, when you hear host, it's the computer you want to connect to through SSH, so where SSHD is running. User is the login name, operating system user you want to connect to via SSH. And with account is whoever connects physical person or virtual account. Basically, it's the private key owner. So, why? I use several laptops, and I manage several servers, and I work with different teams. So, what happens when a new laptop or new desktop has to be activated, and an, oh, an old laptop or desktop has to be dismissed? or we are going to install a new server, or a new member joins our team, or worst, a current member leaves the team. Well, you need to update your authorized keys everywhere. Of course, if you use it, then, and if you don't, I think you should. So, I hate doing this kind of stuff myself or some other teammates, because it's very error prone, files are scattered in several places. So it's a full matrix of user and host. It's, at the same time, it's a critical but monkey war. I mean, you have to do the same things over and over, so you have to copy and paste or SSA key uh, copy around your servers. And if you, I forget to add the key, someone will complain, she can do her job, at the same time, if you forget to remove a key, Simon will have access to the host while she shouldn't. So at the same time, you miss the full picture. I mean, did I forget to add the key in some host or user? And there's no way to verify it but checking everything. So uh, the other question is, oh, who can access this host? maybe with this user. You have to cut the authorized key files and remember each key uh, who's the owner of each public key. And so, so I want a single place to manage all of this stuff. Then what? Okay, we can rely on configuration management configuration management, Ansible, Puppet, Chef, or whatever you can choose. Or Science OpenSH 6.2, which is quite old, five years old. A new option is available. It's called authorized keys command. How many of you know this command, this option? Okay. And authorized key command, supports fetching authorized keys from a common standard out beside or instead of the file system. And okay, I got it, I want this. And thanks to Gianni, which is here, that had him here there. So the idea is to store accounts, public keys, and permission in a single place and serve them through HTTPS to each host. So from whatever client, you SSH with the username, the US user, to the host. The host fetches authorized keys from an external server, and it passes uh, host name and the user. So like this, get, authorized key, host name, and user. The server, Theo in this case, looks up for the key which are authorized for the user, a.user in the example, on host server one. If it finds any, it returns them to the host, like a normal authorized key files. So, this is Theo. Theo does exactly this. 
has three components. The first one is the two server, where you will store the authorized, the, the public keys, the accounts, and the permissions. Then we have a TO agent. A TO agent is the command that SSHD will run when a new connection, uh, when a new is requested. And then we have this TO CLI, which is the common tools you use uh, to add new accounts, remove accounts, and add permission, and so on. So let's start with the first one, TO server. So it's already available as a Docker image. I'm sorry, it's not. It's in the Docker app as TO app slash TO. And you can use SQL Live 3 or MariaDB or MySQL database to store data. It supports caching per user host authorized keys. So it's an, in, if the cache for this um, couple user host is already in cache, it doesn't, it doesn't have to query the database. You can use memcached or Redis as, as you prefer. And it's written in Node.js. The server exposes several REST APIs for manipulating what? Accounts, for sure, groups, authorized keys, and permission. And it's consumed by Teocli. Exposes also an endpoint for fetching authorized keys, and it's consumed by the TO agent. So TO agent is easy to use because as a self-install feature, you can execute it the first time, passing the the parameters you want, and it will update the SHAD um, config, and it, uh, it will create the structure it needs. Keeps a per local, per user, local copy of the authorized keys in the event that the TO server is unreachable. So if you, see if a TO agent is unable to reach TO server, it will use, if present of course, the local, the, the local uh, copy. So it's the last time he was able to fetch the authorized key for that user. The agent can verify authorized key signatures so, and discard them if are not valid. We will return on this later. And it's written in Go. Uh, we wrote an agent, yes, but it can be replaced by a shell script that cools the server because it's just HTTPS. It could be slightly harder if you enable the signature verification because you have to it's not enough uh, using core. Okay, then TOCLI is already available as an NPM package. The NPM package name is TOAP-CLI. It supports authorized case signatures, and it's written in Node.js, of course. So, what is authorized case signing? The problem with, we, we talk is we need to avoid unauthorized keys to be returned to SHD. So TOCLI and TOAgent both support a way to sign TOCLI signs and to verify TOAgent verifies each keys. When you set up TOCLI, you can create a, a, a certificate for, uh, with a private key and when it uploads the public key to the TO server, it attaches also the digital signature of the key. TO agent, on the other side, when it downloads the, other, the authorized keys, it receives also the digital signatures and it verifies it using the public key. So, okay, right now we have uh, these slides will help you to go through the a demo. And the first thing we do is to generate some tokens we will use for administration, so used by TOCLI and for uh, TO agent. In this case, we will use the first one for the TOCLI and the other two for uh, TO agent. 
We just run the server as a Docker image. We will see we just pass a local directory as a volume. And we will pass the uh, admin token and the client token. We will say to Docker which part we want to expose, and we'll run it. For Teo server is enough. The Teo CLI, we have to install it. I install it globally uh, with NPM. I will export two variables I need, Teo URL and Teo token, which this one is the admin token used before. We can also store these variables in these two different places. Per user in dot Teo. Okay, this is a, a mistake. This is Teo enough slash uh, in the home directory is dot Teo uh, enough not Teo cli and uh, or in uh, system wide etc Teo cli env. So the first thing to do is using Teo cli is to create. A, um, Okay, maybe it's better, to create a new account. So we just have to add a name and an email. Email, of course, must be unique. After that, we can add the public key. In this case, I will use my own public key in my own directory. And as you can see, by the output to the first account, which is... Uh, the first account we created is assigned this public key. Okay, then we can create a, another account here. And also, I will put the same uh, public key. And do the same for the third account. At this point, I'm going to create a group. A group is a way to uh, assign the same permission to a, to a group of users. So first I create a group, and then I will add some users, some accounts to the same group. Now I can assign permission to the group. So I can say the group, the, all the accounts, of the group developers uh, are granted to log in as user node to the host test server. At the same time, I can add a permission to a single account, of course. So in this case, I will say that the account sysop.a at example.com is granted to SSHS user admin on test server. You can have a quick overview uh, using the command groups get developers and it will list all the accounts that are in this group and the permission of the group. The same thing you can do it for a single uh, account and it will return all the public keys associated with this account and all the groups is into. And at the same time also the permissions. And that's all. Now we have to configure Teo agent. The easiest way is to download uh, from GitHub. You can download the last test binary and after you downloaded it, you have to add the execution bit. Then you can create a specific user. In this case, I had no shell, so it's been false. It has no login. And at this point, you can use this install feature. And they say, with this command, you say, OK, install me. Don't ask me anything. Do the default. Add this URL as Teo server and use this token to connect to. You have to reload SHAD after, after that. Before uh, logging out from the, from the server, I suggest
to check that everything is working, so you can execute. It's done. Ah, OK, sorry. That's all. But basically, after you do that, you should be able to log in from your local machine using the key to the users. You defined it before. So that's it.